All right, so the second goal and the second objective in this lesson is to really identify why your goals are important to you. So I shared with you my goals. I want to, you know, I want to live a happy life. I want to um, open up a, and the Alaskan Oasis, which is going to be a wellness retreat and transformation center, which I'll talk more about in the next section. Um, but, and I want to leave a legacy. I want to kind of take what I know and inspire others and empower others and help people kind of live their lives to the fullest. Um, but if we don't also think about the why, you know, why is that important to me? What's the rationale behind it? Sometimes that can actually um, cause us to, you know, second guess or let go of our, you know, let go of those important things. Okay, well, yeah, that's a nice dream, but it's, you know, it's too far out there and it's not that, you know, I'm never really going to get there. It's just something that I like to fantasize about. Well, if you, you know, if you continue life with that type of attitude, yes, yes that, that is true. You are only going to live to the potential that you've pushed yourself to. So, so it's important to consider why, why our goals are important and what they really mean to us. Every moment in your life of existence, your brain, your big beautiful brain, which is in your, is inside your head, is perceiving environmental stimulus. So all of the sights, sounds, smells, tastes, sensations, thoughts, feelings, urges, all of those all of those things, the thoughts and the images and, um, that, are, um, that are triggered by your perceptions, those lead to physiological and neurological responses, which are automatic processes that you have no, no control over, right? You can't you can't control everything. You can't control the, all of the information that goes in, and you can't control how your brain and your body responds to those things. The way that I like to think about that, and it helps me to really conceptualize my own issues as they come up, is to visualize the character from Finding Nemo that's the, it's the octopus, I believe, that um, if you remember that that character gets startled by something and then inks, so she's like, me, me, me. And, and so I like to think about our, think of our bodies and our brains in that way, because it's a, you know, that inking response when something startling or sudden or, you know, painful, some sort of, you know, stimuli that is, um, that needs to be responded to right now, where the body and the brain perceives as needs to be responded to right now, can cause an, this, um, you know, your brain to ink. There's a, an overstimulation, an overwhelming sense or feeling that clouds our perceptions and clouds our judgment. Um, and so we can go through life attempting to avoid those triggers, right? So if you know that um, when I'm, when I, if you know that when you're in a loud environment with lots of people, that tends to evoke an anxiety type, an anxious type response high heart rate, dry mouth, closed throat, that causes you to want to run away, you can avoid those environments. You can avoid those trigger, triggering environments, but
but re but the reality is is that it's only a temporary fix to the problem so it doesn't it doesn't make you more able to handle those things in the moment um the one instance in my life that comes to mind is um oh, quite a few years ago when uh, my husband and i had first started dating i he wanted to go out to dinner and he wanted to go to this um, new buffet and i didn't you know i had been to buffets before and they were fine but I, when we went there, I, you know, we walked in and all of a sudden the noise and the people and the smells and the you know, chaotic nature of that, of the environment and, you know, everybody was moving in every which way. I got this just overwhelming urge to run out of there. And so I didn't, but I was really, you know, I was really short with my husband and I didn't, you know, I was like, okay, let's just get our food and let's eat and get out of here. And I, oh, this is really making me want to, you know, crawl out of my skin. Um, but we, you know, but I did it, but it wasn't an, it wasn't an enjoyable experience. It wasn't an enjoyable experience for me. And because I was acting in a way that clearly demonstrated that I was not having a good time. My husband also didn't have a good time. Um, and so, you know, in that, in that, that moment itself, you know, I let that, um, I let that anxiety, I let that stress really overtake my perception and my ability to move forward and just be in the moment and enjoy things. Um, but then what it, what it did kind of to future behavior was then I, you know, I, I got this at any time that anything ever came up about, you know, going out to dinner, going anywhere, I started to, you know, kind of that um, physiological panic response started to kind of set in. And I was like, you know, avoid, nope, I'm, I don't want to go there. I don't want to do that. I don't want anything to do with it. I know that that might sound enjoyable to you, but there's nothing in, you know, nothing in me that finds that enjoyable whatsoever. So I'm not going to go. And that temporarily fixed the situation because I didn't put myself in that situation anymore. I didn't have to experience those feelings, but we also didn't, as a couple, were able to share some experiences that could have been of value and could have been, um, could have been positive just because of that one experience. So once you, ex once you accept that those things exist, you learn strategies to you know, you know bring yourself more into the present and allow and just you know allow those feelings to be what they are and continue to act in the service of our values once you're able to drop the rope and you stop fighting and you let go of that struggle and you're able to live more in the moment um, you're you are uh, more readily able to engage in value-driven actions. And the idea of acceptance, again, isn't about, um, you know, controlling your thoughts and feelings. The thoughts and feelings are going to come. That is just the natural order of things. There's a stimuli that's perceived, your brain and your body responds, and it, it is it is what it is right we can't we can't control what we can't control the things that happen but we can notice them and we can learn from them we can notice them and think about and observe in an objective way okay so when this happened and then this happened then I had, you know, I, then my body responded this way and I started to think this thing. Okay. What was that pattern? Why did it happen? You can, you can do a functional analysis of those patterns to identify you know, what, where the challenges arise that will help you pinpoint those points 
that you need that you need to be on the lookout for um, and then practice strategies outside of the moment that you can then use in the moment that those things happen to better um, cope with uh, those negative you know those negative feelings negative thoughts as they as they come up and the goal then is to you know when you begin to feel overwhelmed you're not trying to push away those feelings over of overwhelm. The goal of acceptance is to feel it. Right? I notice that this is happening. I feel this, you know, I feel it rising up. That is the moment when we need to take a time out and stop and really feel what we're feeling. Take a deep breath. Put your shoulders back, put your shoulders down, try to relax those muscles. Really breathe into the moment. Feel those feelings. Just notice what is going on inside of your body. Notice the tingling sensation. Notice the warmth. Notice the heart rate. Notice the breath rate. Notice the clenching jaw or the raised shoulders. Notice what you're thinking and really listen and consider what those physiological responses are telling you. Becoming present, taking a deep breath, releasing the muscle tension, releasing the jaw, becoming really present. What am I thinking? Labeling your thoughts. I'm having the thought that. I'm having the sensation that. I'm having the bodily urge that. I'm having the feeling that. I'm having the memory of. And really consider those things. If you need to write them down, write them down. If you need to take a time out from your current environment, take a time out. If there's, if there are environmental stimuli that are, you know, your brain is perceiving those and every time your brain perceives those things, it sends another wave of, um, you know, those negative feelings. It's, it is a physio physiological response. It's your brain, you know, releasing chemicals due to these environmental stimuli, these things that are related in some way to painful past experiences. When you're able to really feel that and be in the moment, you can more readily take actions which are going to allow you to learn more about yourself learn more about your response patterns and learn more about steps you can take in the future to overcome those challenges in the service of living a more valued and um, goal oriented vision oriented life i'm going to share an experience that actually happened to me yesterday i um, I had a lot to do. Things were kind of piling up and I started to feel this tightness in my chest and my heart was racing and I started to feel the panic, the panic set in. It's like, okay, I've got all this stuff to do. And I've got <laughs> okay. So now I'm like getting into like full blown panic mode and I can like, you know, gotten to this point now where I'm, you know, more aware, more able to sense those things as they're coming up. And so I can feel it, I can feel it building. And one of the strategies that I've learned to use that is effective for me is uh, mindfulness meditation. And so just, you know, and what that means to me is I'm, you know, I'm just sitting somewhere for 15 to 30 minutes with my eyes closed just breathing and listening and feeling and, you know, allowing thoughts to just come and go. And if I notice that I get stuck on a thought or stuck on a feeling, 
um, you know, putting that, putting that on a leaf on a stream and, and letting it go by. And so I do what I normally, I did what I normally do, set my chair, close my computer, turn down the light, set my timer and, you know, set my timer for 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, I've, I've got plenty of time to get my work done. And, but I'm, you know, just having this sensation that and having these thoughts, these thoughts about all the things that I have to do, and I'm worried about not getting them done, and I'm worried about having to stay up late, and I'm worried about not, you know, not getting enough sleep, and not feeling refreshed the next morning, and you know, all all of those thoughts. I'm having all these thoughts about, you know, if I if I don't get my stuff together, if I don't get this stuff done, then all of these other things, bad things are going to happen, and that, you know, those you know, those cyclical thoughts got me starting to feel all worked up. Okay. So, sit in my chair. Close my eyes, turn down the lights, turn on the timer for 20 minutes, and I just breathe. I stop and I breathe. And I'm feeling what I'm feeling and I'm thinking what I'm thinking what I'm thinking and I'm really listening and I'm really considering what it means and for you know the bigger picture. And as I'm doing that, after a few minutes, my heart rate starts to go down. The buzz in my brain starts to go away. I'm feeling like, okay, I feel the tension in my shoulders start to release. I'm like, okay, all right, this is okay. I'm feeling much more focused, organized. I'm, you know, ready, ready to do this work. Ooh, okay, feeling good, feeling good. And it was at that moment that my alarm went off. And the alarm on my phone was set to intense vibrate. And also the alarm sound was like this, right? It was like really loud. And the buzz was loud, it was sitting on the table. And so I had, you know, like, you know, I had these moments and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling focused, I'm feeling centered, I'm feeling ready to, you know, take on this next task. Okay, I can do this. And that alarm went off and it was an instantaneous that like the heart rate, the, the brain buzz came back uh, and, and I, you know, I just felt that throughout my whole entire body. And at that moment, I was like, okay, I'm overwhelmed again. Stop, breathe, feel, think. What just happened? What was that trigger? What, how, what did what just happened in my environment that caused me to go from like, "Ooh, I'm feeling in charge, I'm feeling good," to right back up here with shoulders up and um, and it was the alarm. It was that like that sudden buzz. Like I'm in the middle. I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good, but that it's sudden sound like intense sound it rattled the table it you know the alarm was you know loud and kind of obnoxious and it was that noxious stimuli that evoked a like a fight or you know that fight or flight response that panic response in like almost instantaneously and put me right back like right back in that like tense mode and so because I was able to notice that and think about what it meant and think about, okay, what was the thing that actually just in that moment triggered it? So I was feeling good. I thought before I was just like, oh no, you know, it's like, I've got all this stress. I've got all these things to, and I'm worried about all of these things. I'm worried about the future. So that's making me tense up. So I did my mindful, mindful meditation and I was feeling good. And then something else happened. It made me tense up again. It had to do with the way I was coming out of that, you know, or coming back to my present moment. Um, and so what I did was I changed my alarm setting. So there was no buzz and it was just a gentle, like melodious, like, you know, so something gent that will gently bring my attention back to the moment. And I reset my alarm got back in the moment, you know, did my, did my breathing and my leaves on a stream, 
and you know got you know getting recentered to the present moment thinking feeling considering listening to what's going on inside my body thanking my brain for the thoughts and then the alarm went off and i was able to it i didn't have that reaction that reflexive reaction anymore or i didn't have that again i was just able to like oh okay now i'm centered now i'm able, now I'm able to move forward now I'm able to go on to the next step. And um, that skill set, which it is definitely a skill set, has taken a lot of time to develop because it's not easy to break habits that have been practiced for years years and years and years it takes a long you know it can take a long time to learn a skill and it can take a long time to break a habit um, but the more that we're able to see those patterns accept them for what they are live with them and then notice though notice them as they come up the more fluently we're able to do that the easier it becomes to um, handle those challenges in the moment use strategies for yourself which are the are most effective and most efficient at getting you back to back to a place where you can be fully present and um, act in a more effective and consistent way so i want to kind of circle back to last week's homework I introduced briefly this idea of mode of mantras and, um, and they, I noticed an error in my previously, my previous information that I posted. For some reason I was calling, I called them emotional mode of mantras, but they are motivational mode of mantras. Um, but there's, I want to go back to this idea of self-doubt and questioning ourselves in the moment. It is very common to second guess yourself and question why you're doing what you're doing and question if it's worth it. Um, but if you have done the work to clarify your values, clarify your goals, clarify your vision and determine the actions that you are going to take on a day-to-day -day basis which are in alignment and in the service of those values um you know there are going to be times when something comes up that that evokes a, a you know a an internal response which leads to thoughts of self-doubt and questioning because we're constantly comparing ourselves to our to our conceptualized sense of self am i enough am i there I, you know am i on you know am i the person who i say i am and so it's in these moments that uh that the motivational motive mantras can come in very handy because what they serve as is a replacement behavior so when you start to have those thoughts of like, oh, I'm not good enough, this isn't worth it, I'm too tired, I don't have what it takes, I'm really not that smart, nobody really likes me, and nobody cares about me, I might as well just go eat worms. Yeah. Um, I, that those things come in, and so having your motivational motive mantras as that reminder, as that cue, as that replacement behavior, that other thing that we can say, that alternative, that uh, we can practice in those moments when the, when those when those things come up. The more that we practice them, so we have trigger old response, right? And now we we have a new response, replacement behavior, where we're you know we're we have trigger old response, get rid of pain, but not necessarily go moving towards our envision future self. We want to change that response pattern to trigger here, you know, the replacement behavior. I'm going to say or do something, think something else instead 
in the service of my values to keep me on the right track. And so I wanted to share with you my own personal motivational motive mantras um, that are related to my, um, my guiding principle. My guiding principle and the phrase that I use is strive to thrive. And thrive is an acronym for my core values, which are to be trustworthy, honest, respectful, inspiring, value-driven, and engaged. And my mode of entree is related to those. So my things that I can say to myself or, you know, if I can write, put on my wall. Um, so in relation to trustworthy, my mantra is I'm a woman of my, I'm a woman of my word. My value of being honest. My mode of entree is I'm a person who says what I what says what needs to be said when it needs to be said. My mode of entree related to being respectful is that I, you know, this is the most kind, caring, and compassionate thing I can do for myself and the people in my life. My motivation or my mode of entree related to my value of being inspiring is that my goal is to, with all my actions, is to uplift, empower, and motivate. My value of being value-driven, my, my mode of entree is I'm a goal-oriented powerhouse. And my value of being engaged, my mode of, my, my mode of entree is be here right now and take action. So in those moments when I, you know, I'm not feeling as though I'm being trustworthy or I'm, you know, not doing what I said that I'm going to do. I, you know, my reminder to myself is that I'm a woman of my word. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And, but if there's something that I said that I'm going to do that I am not able to do due to other circumstances, I need to be a woman of my word who also, who then takes the next step to communicate in an honest way. Say what needs to be said when it needs to be said. And when I'm saying what needs to be said when it needs to be, be said, I'm doing it in the most kind, caring, and compassionate way to ensure that my communication is accepted and reciprocated. And my goal always is to empower, uplift, and motivate myself and others so we can all live in harmony within our lives. I want to, I have a lot of big goals and I have a lot of big dreams and I feel as though I can be and will be a powerhouse. And, but what that's going to take is to remain fully engaged right here, right now, in the moment, taking action every day, even though I, ha even though I have a history of trauma, even though I have a history of um, uh, problematic behaviors which have, which have gotten in my way, um, I can still step forward. I can still take action. So the exercise that is related to this, this objective of um, clarifying your goal, why, why your goals are important to you, um, is the exercise is called a wider view. And the reason this is important is because when we start to think about our goals, it is common that those thoughts of self-doubt and second guessing and pulling back are going to come up because we have this, these practice patterns of behavior of I can't, I won't, I'm not good enough. It's, you know, somebody will, somebody won't like it. They'll question me. They'll think I'm dumb. Um, and so those, you know, those things are going to come up. But when we're more able to take a step back, right? So when we notice that we're pulling back or second guessing ourselves, we take a step back, take a wider view, notice what those difficulties are, and really start to dig a little bit deeper to find meaning in them. Like, 
what is it really telling you about why what you're doing is important to you and to the people that you care about? So for me, the reason my goals are important is that I truly, deeply care about other people and how they feel. And I want people, everyone, including myself, but everyone in the world, I want everyone to live lives full of peace, love, and joy. But the problem that I've had and the negative thoughts that I've had is that I have not always been convinced that other people want the same for themselves. So you know, I live my life in a certain way. My husband and I interact in a certain way. And we, you know, we work together, we give each other feedback, we're always kind of like coaching each other to be better human beings. But I don't see that in everybody. And I, and, um, and I see, you know, the patterns of behavior, which have inflicted my life as well. I see those patterns of behavior inflicting other people's lives. And sometimes I wonder, um, if my dream of creating a world that is full of peace, love, and joy for myself, my family, and my community um, is a dream worth fighting for. Because if, peop if, if the other people are not motivated to change, then, um, you know, you might end up, I might end up fighting for something that doesn't matter and that in the end isn't going, to be, isn't going to be worth it. I also begin to have negative thoughts of um, myself in regard to my optimism and I, idealism. So in spite of everything that I've been through, having learned, have, knowing what I know now about behavioral science, um, you know, I, if you've read my profile, I call myself a data-driven optimist. And, you know, I have this ideal vision of what the world could look like if, you know, if everybody understood behavioral science and how, how our brains and our bodies work, um, because it might make us more uh, compassionate and caring and accepting and accommodating and loving and, you know, able to or able to live full lives. Um, but sometimes I question myself, am I just an optimist? Do I just, you know, do I just believe this is going to happen? This is going to happen, but it's really not. Um, but what I remind myself of, because this, this has also come through time and practice and experience, is that, yes, my, I do think that the, what I'm doing and the life I'm living and the life I'm striving for and the life I'm help I'm trying to help other people create for themselves is worth it because I know that um, it feel it feels better when you wake up and you feel good you do good you treat people well um, but it doesn't happen overnight. And I don't have a magic wand, and that's something that you know I have a really hard time with because I wish I did. I wish I did have, did have a magic wand. Um, but I, but it is important work, and I, you know, I'm doing the work that I do for a reason because I see in my, I see in my community the same struggles that I have dealt with my entire life. And because I've had the training and experience that I have had, I have gained a, a different perspective on what is possible. Where I, where I used to feel that I was powerless to change anything, I now feel that I am powerful. I am a goal-driven powerhouse. Um, because I understand that change is possible with motivation and effort and, you know, repeated actions, 
change is possible um, and it is worth it if the end goal is to live a life full of peace, love, and joy, where you can wake up every morning feeling good, breathing easy, and handling the life stressors as they come, but in a way where you aren't engaging in behaviors which are inflicting pain and suffering upon yourself, you aren't engaging in behaviors which are inflicting pain and suffering upon other people, and then others aren't doing those same things. So if, we can all, if we're all engaging in actions which are in alignment with val uh, our value sets and a shared vision for the world, we're gonna be more likely to uh, access those things and kind of get to that end goal. Do I have any sort of notion that the actions that I will take will solve every problem in every corner of this world. No, I don't have that notion. Do I wish that? Sure, of course I do. But I know that the likelihood of that isn't possible. But I know that the actions that I'm taking every day are leading to a more peaceful, loving, and joyful life for myself. And the actions that I strive to take every day are doing the same for my family. And that as I become more able to live that life and my family is able to more um, more able to live that life the, the more time and energy and resources I will have available to dedicate to helping others live their lives to their fullest potential full, fullest potential as well and share my knowledge and share my skills um, with others in the service of um, empowering others to take charge of their lives and utilize these skills as well. Okay. Is there anyone out there who would like to share anything about their goals and their dream life and why it is important to them? Um, I guess my, one of the motive mantras that I came up with was live long and prosper. Not that I'm a Trekkie or anything, but, um, just thinking about, you know, health and why is that important to me? It's because I want to live, you know, live a healthy life, um, a long life because I've got goals of wanting to, you know, be around to see my kids grow up and have families, um, see them be successful, see the other people in my life be successful, um, be able to have time to just travel and enjoy time with my husband after I retire. But kind of looking at all of those goals, it brings it down to, okay, I need to take care of myself now. And so the times when I'm thinking, you know, I really don't want to go out in this 20 degree weather and take a walk, I can remind myself, okay, live long and prosper, you know, so this little step will help me get there. Yeah, I love that. That's a, that's a really good one. Yeah, when I don't feel like doing something for myself, remind myself, I'm living long and I'm prospering. I want to live long and prosper. So, yeah, that's really, that's a good one. Anybody else have any other any other motive that they wanted to share or ideas about why they're important? 